in the Senate, there are um, there's no race here and over the border in Kansas. I've never believed that Pat Roberts is vulnerable to Jim Slattery because I just never thought Jim Slattery was a real candidate for the Senate. I just figured he was sort of a name on the ballot. But if that race tightens up, it's an indication that Republican incumbents everywhere are in trouble. I had mentioned when I was here in um, July that I had races for the Senate lined up in a different way than other people did, and I still continue to have them lined up the way I did then, with the exception of, of moving Elizabeth Dole from like the third tier of vulnerability to the first tier of vulnerability. So the potential Republican losses in the Senate are, I, I believe, as a given. Republicans have lost Virginia. I believe they've lost New Mexico and probably Colorado, although that one is still potentially in the mix. So that's a minus three. And then you look at the Republican incumbents who are in trouble. And since the convention and the introduction of Sarah Palin to the ticket and the new revised populism and anti-earmarks, I think that makes Ted Stevens of Alaska even more vulnerable than he was in July. Uh, Mississippi, Roger Wicker, and then I have added Elizabeth Dole of North Carolina to that very top level of vulnerability. So if all of those would be gone, that six, then you go down to that next three of Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Oregon, all of which have been looking a little worse since the convention, which has been surprising to some people, that the convention bounce that was obvious for the Republicans in states with um, disappointed Republican base and disappointed Republican volunteers that in Oregon, Minnesota, and New Hampshire, that bounce hasn't taken place because there it's the independents and the Democrats that would have to vote for the Republicans. So when you look at it, nine is plausible. I don't think it's going to get to nine, but 55 is probably the, the here, if we're going to tilt over our little thing here, the balancing point, Republicans probably can't come out of the Senate races in better shape than having 45. And if they get to 45, they should declare victory and run. So what you would be looking at here would be Senator Bond functioning in a Senate with fewer Republicans with a very different climate and a Claire McCaskill who whether it's Obama in the White House or not is in a position of having raised her profile and has to be bettered on the issues. Now when I mention that to certain political and corporate audiences and industry groups they say well that's never going to happen she can't be bettered and I said well I'm sorry but I don't know how you get to where you need to be without making people like her better on your issues because the numbers are not going to be there within the Republican caucus and with what I think today is going to be an Obama White House. If you can find a connection, you take it. Whether you have to build bridges made out of little scraps or whether you can build bridges out of something sturdy, you're going to have to build a bridge where you can. In the House of Representatives, this is where I really enjoyed being here to see the commercials. I saw, I, I'm calling this the, uh, the race here between Graves and Barnes, the race between Opie Taylor and uh, Dr. Ruth. And uh, I was warned by Trey in July that when I rolled my eyes and said, oh my God, this is not the Sam Graves that I thought I knew, he said, the ads are going to get worse. So I was like holding my breath when I got here and I was surprised because I saw five times the one that really makes him look like Opie Taylor, which I think is a great ad. It's about um, the soil and the roots of having been here, one of us and proud of it. Now I hope that that's what they stick to and that they don't run too many of those ads making her into Dr. Ruth. But I had used the Graves race as an example of how the Democrats had because of their sense of the issues and their certitude that they would have enough volunteers to uh, kind of people a lot of races and that they would have plenty of money, that they could go out and recruit people they hadn't recruited before and that they could expand the playing field. And I had said that if Sam Graves loses, that means Republicans have lost 30 seats. If he wins, it means they haven't lost 30 seats, but it means that he will have had a race that he was not expecting and Republicans weren't expecting. And that as you looked around the country, there were these other Republican incumbents who, through no fault of their own, 
and by the districts that they represented and by their positioning in the Congress wouldn't ordinarily have had opponents that were the quality that they had, but there they are. So it's a good gauge to figure out, are the Republicans in the kind of trouble that some people think they are? Now in the open seat in the ninth district, um, I'm calling this uh, Mrs. Billy Graham runs against Ward Cleaver, because I've really been surprised that the Democrats who in 06 were very good in articulating the message on faith and values have continued to be able to do that. I don't really think Republicans are going to lose this district, but again, it indicates to you that you don't have to leave home to understand what's taking place in other Republican open seats around the country. There are 29 Republican open seats, and about every one of them has a Democratic candidate that is slightly off from where the Democratic candidates would have surfaced before, that they are, if, even if you would call them left of center, they are campaigning as centrists and they are finding the parts of their resume and background, if not a voting record, that portrays them in a way that at least causes pause among disaffected Republicans is appealing to independence and at the same time allows them to tie down a Democratic base. So the Judy Baker, Blaine Nutkemeyer race is very typical of the races around the country where Democrats might have had competition in their primaries, but their primary nominee came out with a stronger base, at least measured by percentage of the vote and vote totals, than the person on the Republican side who had had to emerge out of a primary that didn't make any sense to outsiders, where people were fighting about things that ordinarily wouldn't make any difference to outsiders, but somehow enough outsiders saw a difference that they got involved. And in the end, you probably had the nominee you were always going to have, but instead of having that person not slowed down by a primary, that Republican got nominated after having had to crawl through a lot in order to get there. But if you think that that race is a close race, then the Republicans in the open seats have a lot of difficulty. Now, I think that this collision of what I'm calling these, these factors that don't make any sense that Ed and I were talking about in the beginning, when you reintroduce the culture wars of, of 2000 and 2004, and you still have the anxiety of the 2006 let's fix it voters, and you have the change in demographics and the map of 2008, and you add to that the mechanics that the Obama people have introduced into the campaign, for the first time, the ability to have fundraisers without holding events, the ability to register people to vote in places that you thought were already saturated. When you add all of that together, you have this possibility that all of these factors can have an impact on house races, but not necessarily in the way that it will have an impact on the presidency. So it's possible for the house races to be the thing that the Republicans can cling to. Now, I have not heard Roy Blunt say this, but I was told this week at a breakfast, he said Republicans are poised to gain five seats in the House. That's the current of this week mindset of the Republicans about the House, that they aren't going to lose 30 seats, they won't lose 20 seats, they won't lose 10 seats, they're going to gain seats. That sets up the current Republican leadership for a big downfall. There is all of these undercurrents of rumors in town that if the Republicans lose more than 15 seems to be the, this tilting tipping point here, that if Republicans lose more than 15 seats in the House of Representatives, which is a high probability, that the combination of John Boehner as minority leader and Roy Blunt as minority whip and Tom Cole as head of the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee will not have their seats when the 111th Congress is seated that they will be moved out of the leadership, they'll still be members of Congress, they'll still be on their committees, nobody's going to strip them of their committees, but that they will lose their current position of power and status. So if that's the case, not only do you need to be asking yourself, how do we deal with a, a senator bond that can be positioned differently in a diminished Republican caucus in the Senate with all of the things that made him what he is, you also may be facing, what, how do we handle a Roy Blunt that might be the big deal? 
And I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but I'm telling you the rumors in Washington are rampant that it cannot come out, the Republicans cannot come out of this election with the same leadership in place if they lose more than 15 seats or whatever that tipping point may be. So I think you need to pay a little bit of attention to that.